This is Dr. Lam. Adrenal fatigue related health conditions can be broadly classified into five main areas. First, we have metabolic system imbalances. Now, anybody with a severe adrenal fatigue will be able to tell you that they have problem maintaining their blood sugar at a level that is very, very steady. A uh, part of the reason is because hypoglycemia is uh, commonly associated with adrenal fatigue, even though if you measure the blood level of the sugar, it is considered normal and not considered low. This is normally due to a combination of low cortisol and high insulin level when the body is under stress. The normal stress response by the adrenal gland is to increase blood sugar level. However, glucose release is slowed as the output of cortisol reduces during later stages of adrenal fatigue, such as what happens in adrenal exhaustion. Hypoglycemia itself is a significant stress on the entire body, especially on the adrenal. So you have a vicious cycle that goes on. While this can be overcome by sugar fixes initially in mild adrenal fatigue, and that's why people take Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola or pop drinks as well as donuts or juices to give themselves that little boost, this is only a quick fix and usually the symptoms will come back only after a short time, usually within one or two hours. Uh, this cycle, if it continues, will make the person really more uh, drained and towards the end of the day, the person will feel nearly exhausted without having done anything. Low blood sugar are usually most likely to occur therefore around 10 a.m., 2 p.m. as well as from 3 to 4 p.m. Hypoglycemia is also related to the autonomic nervous system dysfunction, which we will describe uh, later. Uh, secondly, we have a musculoskeletal system breakdown. Now, collagen and protein are broken down in a catabolic state of uh, function during the adrenal fatigue. This can lead to chronic pain syndromes, joint pains, chronic fatigue, and fibromyalgia. It must be remembered that the glucocorticoids, uh, primarily cortisol, are steroidal hormones produced by the adrenal glands' response to stress. Now, cortisol output is high in stage 1 and stage 2, and then as the adrenal fatigue progresses, the cortisol output often is pushed to the limit and then finally goes down. As cortisol goes up, the, uh, one of the side effects of the, this hormone is the breakdown of protein, resulting in an overall net catabolic state, meaning the amount of buildup of the muscle is less than the amount of breakdown. So as a result, broken down muscles are not adequately replaced. Collagen is broken down without significant replenishment. Outwardly, wrinkles starts to develop as premature aging sets in. Internally, organs and muscle breaks down tend to lead to chronic muscle and joint pains of unknown origin, especially after strenuous exercise or heavy lifting. Adrenal fatigue therefore is often associated with poor ability to digest protein as well as the gastrointestinal systems tend to slow down. So this will only add to the musculoskeletal pain and syndrome. It should come therefore as no surprise that secondary fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue are commonly associated with adrenal exhaustion. A third, we go into the neurological system dysfunctions, and this can be divided into various categories. Uh, because the adrenal fatigue can lead to insomnia, sleep disturbances, brain fog, anxiety, and depression if the central nervous system is involved. Peripheral nervous system dysfunction is often associated with orthostatic hypotension, dizziness, lightheadedness, temperature intolerance, fainting spells, tingling, and numbness sensation of the extremities, as well as sweating dysregulation. Uh, first, we talked about the central nervous system imbalances. When you have imbalances of the adrenal glands, then what happens is that you start to have sleep disorders. Both too high and too low, a nighttime cortisol level can cause sleep disturbances. Waking up between 1 to 3 a.m. is a characteristic of low blood sugar during this time as well as cortisol imbalances. Sometimes it is accompanied by nightmares, sudden onset of heart palpitations, anxiety attacks, and cold sweats. Now, chronic lack of sleep is strongly associated with decreased immunity as well and impaired glucose intolerance as well as the decreased alertness and concentration. Cortisol, DHEA, testosterone, and estrogen are key hormones produced by the adrenals. Decreased level of each of these hormones can reduce the adrenal function and also has been linked to depression, which is a part of the central nervous system dysfunction. It comes as no surprise that those with advanced adrenal fatigue is strongly associated with increase in fear, anxiety, depression, as well as difficulty concentrating. 
a lot of people also complain of brain fog, which is a mental state where the memory becomes clouded or unclear. Uh, the exact physiology is not very clear, but it's postulated that excessive metabolite buildup in the brain over time due to poor clearance is a major factor. Now, uh, it brings up a point that many people try to do detoxification to get themselves better from adrenal fatigue, but improper detoxification can make the body worse and make brain fog more decompensated. And it also can even trigger a retoxification reaction if not done carefully. The peripheral nervous system imbalances is quite significant. The uh, sympathetic nervous system as well as the parasympathetic system comprises the autonomic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system is what keeps the unconscious housekeeping functions of the body going. They regulate blood pressure, body temperature, forces of the heartbeat as well as heart rate. A combination of a sympathetic overtone which is oftentimes happened during adrenal fatigue is what's responsible for many of the common symptoms including heart palpitations, blood pressure irregularity as well as uh, sweating. Oftentimes, the sympathetic nervous system is activated because the body feels that it's in a danger state and therefore activate the autonomic nervous system to compensate and as an emergency measure. Unfortunately, the adrenaline released from the stimulation of the autonomic nervous system can lead to all these side effects that we mentioned earlier, including panic attacks, heart palpitations, strong heartbeat, irritable bowel, being wired and tired, pots, orthostatic intolerance, orthostatic hypotension and also contribute to hypoglycemia as well as a temperature intolerance. One can also have neurotransmitter dysfunctions such as glutamate, uh, GABA, uh, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, histamines, serotonin, melatonin, acetylcholine, and nitric oxide. These are all neurotransmitters that works in the body to maintain homeostasis and there's no wonder that if you have adrenal fatigue and neurotransmitter dysfunction, you're going to have problems sleeping depression, as well as an increase in allergy from the histamine imbalance, serotonin imbalance leading to depression, melatonin imbalance leading to insomnia, acetylcholine dysfunction, as well as nitric oxide dysfunction that can also lead to other physiological states. In the early stages of adrenal fatigue, meaning stage 1 and stage 2, serotonin levels tend to be weakened, epinephrine and norepinephrine is elevated, and GABA tend to increase to compensate. As the adrenal fatigue progresses, the cortisol output will start to fall, thyroid binding globulin tend to rise, leading to reduce in the T4 and T3 with a corresponding rise in TSH. DHEA increase in the body is put on overdrive, serotonin falls as the dopamine and norepinephrine continue to rise as the sympathetic nervous system is activated. Number four, we have hormonal system imbalances and overload, and this can be divided into several categories. The first category being adrenaline and norepinephrine overload and reactive sympathoadrenal response. A rise in the absolute level of adrenaline in the body leads to an increase in heart rate, increase in blood sugar, respiration, uh, reduce in serum potassium, as well as constriction of blood vessels. Unfortunately, in people suffering from adrenal exhaustion, the excessive activation of the sympathetic nervous system leads to a massive amount of adrenaline and no adrenaline being released, and that can remain in circulation for a long period of time. In layman's terms, the body's internal thermostat appears to be malfunctioning and the body is, uh, goes through wild metabolic and hormonal internal gyrations like a roller coaster with a lot of adrenaline flooding the system. Laboratory studies, unfortunately, continue to be uh, subclinical. Unless a clinician is alert, this reactive state is often missed. You can also have estrogen and progesterone imbalances leading to a continuum of estrogen dominance such as a PMS, endometriosis, PCOS, fibrosis express disease, breast cancer, as well as irregular menstrual cycles. Hormone imbalances can also include thyroid imbalances, which are very, very common. As you can see, uh, adrenal fatigue is commonly associated with secondary hypothyroidism, where uh, the thyroid laboratory test may be normal, but the person is clinically sub-functioning in terms of high thyroid and can be considered hypothyroid. There can also be a cortical hormone imbalances such as uh, aldosterone imbalances leading to irregular blood pressure as well as salt and fluid retention problems. Lastly, there could be androgen imbalances including masculinization effects from testosterone uh, with symptoms such as seborrhea, dermatitis, acne, hirsutism, as well as uh, velvety light brown to black markings usually on the neck. In men, the low libido is often associated. 
Uh, finally, we have immune system dysfunctions with the symptoms such as allergies. The weaker adrenal, the stronger the effects of allergens because of the histamine release and the less the cortisol is being secreted. Therefore, you have less anti-inflammatory response. Number two, uh, you also have an autoimmune disease that becomes more prevalent such as Hashimoto's disease as well as rheumatoid arthritis because of the cortisol effect. Thirdly, infection can be more prominent and people can have recurrent infections for no reasons it seems. Uh, in summary, metabolic, musculoskeletal, neurological, hormonal, as well as immune system dysfunction can all be independent or they can be associated with adrenal fatigue. If you have any of these symptoms and has failed to get better and conventional medicine has failed to give you any insight, you may want to consider them as part of the overall adrenal fatigue picture. I hope this presentation has been helpful to you to understand how adrenal fatigue is related to many, many health conditions. This complete article can be viewed in my public educational website, uh, drlam.com, that's www.drlam.com. Look for the article called Adrenal Fatigue Related Health Conditions. Uh, if after reading you have some questions, feel free to write to me from the website, or if you need personalized attention, you can call my office.